Mary Jane. Hey. It's not quite 420 anywhere, but it's sort of 420 on the East Coast. What's up? Here we are. It's about that time. Chilling with our man, Peter motherfucking Dante. Hey. And as we both know, hi Noah. Good to see you. Hi, bud. Nice to see you. Thanks uh, for coming through. Thanks for having me. As we both know, in New England, uh, we and anyone from there and people who remain there pretend it's 420 any hour or minute of the day. So happy 420, New England. New England, happy 420 from two <laughs> New Englanders in LA. Because we ain't out there. You yeah. got, y'all are covered in snow. Yes, you are. There's no amount of weed you can smoke to make the weather change, but you can try. Whose driveway did you have to help shovel this morning? Yeah. Mrs. Levine's? Who? I'm just, I just want Seriously. To and were you trying to get some extra pocket change? <laughs> helping out the neighbors? It's brutal. Was there a layer of ice underneath the snow that made it extra fun? <laughs> so you could fall down in your fucking Timberlands? Yeah, Yeah, cool. an extra <laughs> steep driveway, you know? You, you might end up with some Swiss Miss at the end. That's not a bad reward. Hot cocoa for everyone. Hot cocoa for everyone. Maybe some fluff? Put a little scoop of fluff on top. Peanut butter and fluff a nutta. Peanut butter, fluff a nutta, and hot <laughs> cocoa for everyone to keep them mitts warm, but we're not worried about that. <laughs> It's fine. Yeah, and by the way, everyone in the valley, like San Fernando or Coachella, are like, what the fuck are you talking about? Where no. the, the fluff, guys, the fluff is real. Sorry. Butter and fluff, fluff is real. a movement. Fluff is an esoteric language. Not everyone knows the way of the fluff, so to speak. <laughs> but for anyone who's out there who's interested, talk to a New Englander. They can tell you about fluff life. Yeah, we will elaborate on the fluff life. I would say that this. I would say fluff was its own food group. My dad was very concerned about making sure he had enough fluff in his <laughs> life. I was just gonna say that. Being one of six children from New England as well, it was wicked bad if you finished the fluff. And we always knew that. So like there was like two or three almost empty fluffs that Two of the three, the fluff was kind of hard anyways because someone left the top off. Yeah. Probably yeah. drunk at night, one of the older brothers or sisters. It would sisters. happen. Yeah, it happens in New England often. So you didn't want to finish the fluff because, yeah, dad would get pissed off. Dad needs to have his fluff. Because <laughs> it would be like 11, 30, 12, the late night shows were on. Where's dad at? Oh, he's in his underwear eating fluff in the kitchen. By the way, in his boxers, the Wonder Bread's toasting, the peanut butter, the Peter Pan's out, and the fluff's right next to it. Same knife, because he licks it, he cleans it in between yeah. usage, you know what I'm saying? My dad- Just a New England move. My dad was more spoon straight into the fluff. He wasn't worried with a sandwich, he wasn't worried about the fucking peanut butter. It was spoon, maybe, maybe a scoop of coffee ice cream directly into the mouth, lick the spoon, probably not that clean, because there was always some sort of like small coffee ice cream residue on like the edge of the, the, the fluff layer, you know, the top fluff layer, so you could, you could tell who had been in it last. And then there was the, there's the two fluff options. There's the plastic container or the glass container. Two different consumption right. options. Well, the glass container is much smaller than the plastic container. The plastic container is much larger, but easier for you to leave the top off. True. That's <laughs> very true. The glass container screws on, the plastic container clicks on. So, i.e., too high, too drunk. You leave it off, shit turns hard as a rock. Could be all of the above. <laughs> it's done. I love it. Well, Peter, thanks for uh, coming through and hanging with us on About That Time. Uh, do you want to tell the people a little bit about where your head's been at as of late? Yeah, sure. What's been uh, going on? Besides uh, just Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. Happy all. Hanukkah, everybody. Day Light three. a candle or two or smoke three. Your, smoke your marijuana. Drink that gin and tonica. Fan man. You Very well put. Yeah. So uh, words. besides celebrating Hanukkah with the fam, just um, continuing to coach lacrosse for my son Lucas and his team, the West LA Riptide and uh, volunteer for the Santa Monica Dragons as well. I am presently selling, not really selling, but shopping the Dante's Inferno lollipops that are made with some beautiful hash oil. These are 75 milligrams, sour apple and melon flavored. And for those of you that have tried them, ew, including Action Bronson who Ate it like a Tootsie Pop, but didn't even lick it. He just chomped on chomped it. Chomped through it. Yeah. Chomping on it, I don't suggest. Chomping on it, the hash oil gets stuck in your teeth. And, you and you're high, like high indefinitely. Longer. Yeah, just you're way like, indefinitely. Yeah, you're high for a longer period of time. That's through studies and investigation. And, you know. 
So otherwise, scientific, uh, highly scientific research. Noah Rubin, I will say that Pete Dante is just living life. Happy to be I here. I like to hear that. You know, life is good. Um, the cannabis industry blowing up everywhere. It's true. I'm interesting, interested to see things like, you know, Corona buying nine percent of, of the canopy. canopy for yeah. Two, interesting things out there. Two hundred forty-five million dollars. You know, something like that. Dropping coin. When you got that Corona money, you ain't sweating it. But I love that we know how small this business really is. It's small. I don't like to look in the camera, but you know who I'm looking at. No, you, we can look in the camera. We say hi to the people. <laughs> people, step up your lollipop game. Take a, t take a tip from your friend Peter. I'm talking to all my growing friends out there, baby. We will make sure it goes down correctly. Life will be good for all of us. I am divulging my whole life, basically, into the whole medicinal side, but yet helping the re recreational side go well as well. Also well, so that my, you're delving into yeah. some industry talk here. Every day on About That Time, we have a segment called Roll the News, where we talk about some important cannabis headlines, so we can dig into that and extrapolate some even more nuggets for the people out there. So, um, first of all, Roll the News, brought to us by The Weekend Box. I'll tell you more about The Weekend Box when we're done with Roll the News, because people get excited about Roll the News. They want to hear what Mary Jane has been talking about on MaryJane.com. Guys, if you haven't been there, you're sleeping. About that time, Peter Dante, and Mary Jane. Mary the correct way. Yeah. Mary. M E R R Y. Happy Get Mary holidays. out here. Mary. 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 Yeah. So, the first story we have from Roll the News today is about the small farmer's success in California's legal cannabis market will depend upon educated consumers. This is a story we recently published, reported by Madison Margulis, uh, about. You know, not only have the Northern California growers experienced these wildfires that were very, very destructive. I had friends that lost crops. Yep. Fen friends of all, all of these friends have lost crops. It's a, it's a, it's a tough time. Plus, there's no insurance for such things, so yeah. it's a, a lot of, a lot of loopholes to jump through. But in addition, we've got this adult use legalization market happening in California, which is, raises another set of questions for folks that have been operating outside of a legal infrastructure for a very long time. Now they're at risk of potentially being pushed out. Uh, with this new legalization, all the paperwork that comes along with it. Now, this story is reporting uh, that uh, uh, with an interview with E.D. Lerman, uh, who's an, atten uh, an attorney with the Emerald Forest Consulting Company, uh, that he feels that proper marketing is going to be one aspect that helps cultivators stay competitive in the new marketplace. Uh, they think that the story should be about farmers and products, um, and it has to be authentic. Uh, so people really need to be telling their stories uh, all these mom and pop cultivators up north to distinguish themselves from corporate players. What do you think about that? That right there is the most important statement, right? The corporate players must understand that there's generations of growers from Mendocino and Humboldt and outside Sacramento, everywhere. Um, and I know many of these families, I know their children, I know their dads, their uncles, I know some of their grandpas who, you know, were the beginning of this. They need to not be marketed correctly, they need to be respected. And they need to be you know, brought out the way they should be brought out. Like the state needs to work with them because they've been doing it the longest. They've been growing the best weed, giving the best prices to stores and otherwise because marijuana hasn't been legal yet in California until this past year. So I believe that uh, all these guys, even the local growers who are guys like the OG Rascal guys, my friends, and you need to go to these guys and learn how to do what they're doing the right way. The state should be using them, you know, as and being under their tutelage and then using them and getting them to sell, you know, I think primarily first rather than dealing with the corporate people at all at first because California has been doing it the longest and although they think it's a wild, wild west here, no. I know so many people in this world, our weed world, and they're great people, they're family people and they should be the ones first and foremost doing the most business. You know? Very well put, Peter Dante. I think that, you know, sort of the conclusion of the story is like, for these farmers to be looking at things like organic, sustainability, outdoor, small batch, is kind of, they're gonna end up being their niche because when it comes to price point, when you're an independent farmer who has this tradition, making sure that the tradition that you're upholding becomes part of your brand and make people really know about that is gonna be what really makes you stand out in the marketplace. So according to Leo Stone, the founder of Aficionado, I don't know if anyone out there has had an Aficionado pre-roll. There's some of the finest, mm -hmm. uh, finest pre-rolls you've ever smoked in your life. Shout out to Leo. Leo, what he, up? 
He says, quote unquote, do you want to be boxed wine or do you want to be something like you saw in Bordeaux? And I think that's well put. Like, you got to be. Would you, you rather be a have a wine, wine from France or Italy or? A box. Yeah, a wine from a box. Not the box. No, not. Sometimes you want a box, but not when no, it comes to wine. No, sometimes you want a hot box, but. You don't want a box of wine ever. No, when it, comes, when it comes to wine. <laughs> there you go. Simply put. Anyway, all our, all our growers out there, shout out, respect. Love Legalization you guys. is coming. Much respect, much support from us, the Mary Jane family, the About That Time family. Um, so we're going to move on to story number two from Roll the News tonight, which is about a jury that just acquitted a Colorado woman for possessing 30 pounds of cannabis. Um, a Mesa County jury found Brenda Maggio, who was 60 years old, not guilty of all charges related to marijuana possession over the legal limit and intent to distribute 30 pounds of weed. She was charged in 2013. The police came to Maggio's place following up a wellness check after a disputed phone call concerning the IRS. The cops smelled weed, which in Colorado is no longer grounds for probable cause, searched her place and found 30 pounds of flour. She gave an interview to Mary Jane she said, she can't grow anything small. It's what's been keeping me alive. It's a miracle I'm here. Uh, she's been using all this weed to relieve pain due to a previous car accident, and she's been making concentrates. The interesting thing I think here is 30 pounds, 30 pounds of flour, 30 pounds of concentrate, 30 pounds of lollipops. 30 pounds is not really a, a good measure of what it is you have on your person or your residence or your business, right? No. 30 pounds of Dante's lolly, Inferno lollipops, is that gonna get me in trouble? Or is 30 pounds of flour gonna get me in trouble? We need clarity around that kind of thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't... <laughs> What's the most weed you've ever been busted with? Uh, pound and a half, probably. Pound and a half, that's a good amount. Mm, you know. Not 30 pounds, that's no, a lot for a 60 year old lady. Yeah, but respect to her. Yeah, but also the fact that it was mentioned that it's not, them smelling it is not grounds for them for coming in, then that should get the case dropped, so it got dropped, right? There you go. Well, actually, the interesting point here. Was she making her own concentrates? She was making her own concentrates. Hats off to you, lady. Hats off. Because you're amazing, we love ha you. Hats <laughs> off to Brenda Maggio. Brenda Maggio, getting it done, Italiano style, growing it, homegrown, just like your tomatoes. Uh, homegrown, homemade, like just like the, the tomato sauce. Yeah. Just like the tomato sauce. So I think the interesting point here, in addition to the fact that smell should no longer be a probable cause, is that juries are playing a very important role in these kind of acquittals, and we're seeing a pattern of the fact that juries are almost always in favor of the defendant. That when it comes to pot busts or any of these kind of pot infractions, that juries are overwhelmingly supporting the defendants. Now, one thing that's an interesting point is that especially in DUIs where there's been evidence of marijuana but people passed road tests um, or are medical patients, the juries are always going with defendants. So people, if you've got a jury behind you and you've been faced, charged with some sort of cannabis related crime, uh, the, the numbers are looking like you're going to be okay because I think the bottom line is when you're in front of a jury of your peers, people, people aren't sweating cannabis. You know what well, I mean? That's people the thing. And realize also, it's if bullshit. You are, if you are a medicinal patient of marijuana or a regular user, you should be able to pass a sobriety test, number one, laughingly, you know, because just listen. You can even listen more acutely when you're stoned. Um, and number two, in these <clears> little states like Massachusetts, the opiate problem and the heroin epidemic has gotten so bad. That Vermont, the, New Hampshire, yeah, all this, all the New, New England states, does. All the New England we know states, it's cold out there, guys. Yeah, we but need opiates, legal weed in all these states opiates in New ain't England, gonna guys. That, yeah. ain't going to melt that snow. No, 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 no. Opiates are going to melt your kid's brain and, and have you sitting in the snow at his funeral or her funeral. So no one wants be that. okay with the weed out there. I'm not kidding moms and dads. I do understand medicinally every aspect of it. I have a 16 year old and a 20 year old son where you know, it does put holes in their brain when their brain is not fully developed because of how strong our marijuana is these days. I do get our brains need to be fully developed. So 18 and over, I believe, ish, medically probably 21 is healthier. But if you catch your kid smoking weed versus snorting an Oxycontin or snorting an Adderall because he said he had to stay up for a test, Explain to the child that you would rather catch them smoking with the weed because there's a drastic difference. Yes, I do know and believe that weed is a gateway drug to every other drug there is, but in a consolation party, which you would rather have than a funeral, 
in a consolation party of your child and your children smoking weed versus doing the synthetic drugs, drinking too much, and taking pills and trading pills and snorting pills. God forbid that the consolation party is THC. So I uh, don't know where to leave that, but, but being a parent, that's my... I know where to leave that. We've forgotten a very important thing. We're not smoking weed. <laughs> so let's make sure that happens. Uh, do you want to, uh, this is our bong. This is the in-house bong. How about we do both? I can pack bong hits and you load a, you load a, you know. You we we can join We, we don't have any that. hydration. We're going to put some sparkling water in the bong. That's a classy move. We're, we're high end, we're, uh, we're high end motherfuckers over Lacroix, here. Sparkling water. You know, a little dope. sparkling water in the bong. <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, it's how the, Fre the French do that. It's called Le Bong. I'm down. The French do like that? Nice. We oui, we oui. we're international yes, out here. Are. That's a little co it's a little coconut. There's a little coconut infusion <laughs> yeah, in that like sparkling that. water. We'll have to make sure we're cognizant I love to see coconut. whether that comes through. <laughs> I got a little uh, THC design. Fine sponsors of our show, THC design, coming through with some fine flour for us. Uh, we're gonna make sure that that gets cooking. Where are they located? THC design. Uh, they're repping the Los Angeles. A lot of, of fine, fine indoor cultivation in, in the city of Los Angeles. Are they growing everywhere? Is that what there they're doing? They're selling to stores? The selling Shops. to stores. They have beautiful pre-rolls. They have beautiful flour. Right here, peeps. THC design. And a scientific design, which is quite appropriate for the medicine of THC. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Zero overdoses, by the way. Harvard Medicine. Zero overdoses on this. So, I mean, as much as you might try... You can't have too much, they say. Any, did you get the coconut? Was there a coconut I, overtone? I gotta say, the coconut came clean. Is that true? Yeah. There's a little Hawaiian. What's up? Shaka, brother. Yeah, it was a little Hawaiian, that coconut. Too bad we're not smoking Maui Waui, but, you know, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, we can pretend. Wow, that's nice. Good work. I'm glad we figured that out, because we were headed down a really mm. dark path mm -hmm. there. But, you know the smoke in the air, mm -hmm. it's gotta happen. Um, let me just catch up with so you they're gonna let. So the state of Colorado is gonna let our friend, with what, Maggi, what's her name, Maggio, Maggiano, what's her name, I like that Italian name. She, they're gonna let her continue to grow? She's, she's, she's acquitted of crimes. Her, the jury of her peers has acquitted her of possession. She'll continue doing her thing. Good. You're right. Coconut, guys the out coconut. there. <laughs> the first thing that hits your throat is the coconut. Me and Peter Dante <laughs> have invented coconut bong rips. Uh, the trend is starts a first. now. There that's may be a, a product. There may be a product coming soon <coughs> oriented towards the coconut bong water experience. <laughs> and, and it I'm, does taste just like this. Yeah, que, que bueno. Que tropical. Mm, nice. Stay <laughs> hydrated. It makes you feel, that's a, that could be a great advice for our friends in New England who are dealing with the winter. Put a little coconut bong water. <laughs> it's almost like a little tropical vacation <laughs> while you're there, yeah. dealing with the heat, dealing with the dryness, dealing with your dad in his underwear, <laughs> eating fluff. Finishing the fluff. Finishing the fluff. You could go sledding. You could Coconut's go sledding. Good, babe. That's kind of nice. I gotta say. Yeah, you can go sledding and smell like coconut. Now, you, you have <laughs> a couple kids. Have your, are, your kids have been raised here on the West Coast. Yes, sir. Do you feel like they, there's a hardiness that not having grown up in New England, they may be missing? You mean, do I call them pussies all the time? That was basically what I was asking yes. in a polite way. Often. Well, I, <laughs> I, You're like, when I, I was a kid yeah. in New England. That's, that reminds me, let's show the old Patriot shirt. Go Pats. Yeah. Uh, oh, your mic is on that shirt, leave so you're gonna that. leave that so on, but it's yeah. good that you Anyways, can show it off. To show the Patriot. No, no, it's cool. So, the kids, yeah, no, I have had the pleasure of coaching both of my children all their lives uh, and continue to coach a 16 year old. So, I've been able to have a dad role and a coach role. And sometimes those cross, <laughs> meaning the asshole that I am sometimes as a coach to my child versus the way I treat the other children on the team. I sometimes am like that as a dad. Because in New England, at being the fifth or sixth kids, I was the guy who had to start all the cars, shovel out the driveway, because the plows, when the snows come, in the middle of the night the plows come or real early in the morning, and they cover your driveway up with snow. So somebody's got to go dig it out so we can get to school. It's and, true. And dad, dad needs to get to work, more importantly. So he tells you to go shovel it out. And that's what I'm talking about, like 
Mrs. Levine's an old lady next door. Got to shovel out her driveway and shovel her walk too. And this so. may even be before the days of the snowblower, because there was the pre-snowblower era, and yeah, then yeah. there was the post-snowblower era. Oh, era. plus snowblowers always got clogged, dude. The wet snow in New England, snowblowers will Forget get clogged. About it. It's like a joke. You're trying to unclog it. You don't want to lose three fingers, so you leave that thing, or it stalls flat out, won't start. So you go back to the snow shovel. If it doesn't asphyxiate <laughs> you with the fumes of the gas that is used to power the snowblower. Yeah, and there was an era of plastic snow shovels oh, also in New England. For sure. They fucking break. Don't get a plastic snow shovel. Anytime Useless. it goes below freezing, it has a tendency to just crack and break and piss you off. So don't get the plastic snow shovel. Anyways, what we were talking about is the hardiness of the four seasons. True. And what it does to a child like Noah Rubin or Pete Dante. Here we are. We had to rake leaves in the fall. Definitely. Okay. Man, if we made some money, that would be a good yeah, thing. Yeah, but we could break the yeah, One later. way or another, you're going to be raking some leaves. Yeah, you could get 10 bucks for the wealthy neighbor, definitely. In the summertime, you would plow, you would, uh, blow uh, and plow uh, the grass. Yeah, that's what Mow you the do. grass. Mow the lawn. And sometimes be a landscaper also, which was a pain in the ass. Those big, heavy Yeah, metal. do some weeding. Weeding. Weeding, weeding, weeding the path. Weeding the path. Dandelions everywhere. Yeah, weeds everywhere. New England's different. So, you know, mowing grass, raking leaves, shoveling snow. It's true. A kind of hardiness these West Coast kids may not understand. Yeah. Well, it's let's finish difference. up Roll the News because we're having too much fun oh, yeah, now. Yeah. We're having too much fun. Third the topic. Third story from the MaryJane.com about that time. Cheech Marin. Yes. Marin. Cheech Marin. Has calls on California ganja printers to get licensed while launching his own cannabis brand. Cheech is entering the marketplace. Chong has been in the market for a minute. Cheech is here. Um, he is trying to encourage people to get their shit together because as I spoke about earlier, there's a lot of people that rushing into this legalization in 18 are not quite, don't quite have their business straight because they're pretty much used to doing things how they want to do them. Um, he's setting up a portal called cannabizfile.com. C-A-N-N-A-B-I-Z-F-I-L-E.com. Um, and... That's partnered with uh, the uh, Alex Padilla, who's a lawyer who set up this um, this platform to get people to get their shit straight. Because Is it state run? The funny thing, oh uh, no, it's a private thing that's going to okay. help people get their paperwork done. I think that that's an interesting thing because a lot of people. I mean, even yourself in the law with your lollipop fortune. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like you've got to stay on top of your legal work. You can't just go around selling THC lollipops to anyone anywhere, however you see it fit. Yeah, no, no, you can't do that. Uh, yeah, no, it's smart. People need help always with the information of it, for sure. Um, so Cheech also announced he's going to be joining his longtime partner, Tommy, as a gondrepreneur in his own right. Uh, he will debut his commercially sold pre-rolls under the name Cheech's Private Stash at 20 Nevada dispensaries, then will release prepackaged grams and eighths next month. For the time being, it will be only in Nevada, however. He's got four strains, Nitro Cookie, Sour Diesel, Cactito, and Dolato. Cheech, welcome to the business, bud. Congratulations, you're, Cheech Marin. You're a known entity. Good thing for you to look out with the people, try to get them in there, get their business straight. Yeah. And good thing to put your name on a product, get it out there to the people. There's demand. People, people, people know the Cheech and Chong brand. Oh, God, yeah. Well when known. you look over the lineage of time of weed dealers and movies, there's not many. Well, there's a, there's a legacy, sir. One might argue you're part of the legacy. James Franco gives it up to me. He knows Saul is not as cool I as I heard Dante. James does, Franco doesn't give it up to many guys, so the fact that he gives it up to you is pretty cool. Yeah, he's a good dude. He knows Saul just can't hang with Dante. Dante's got Dr. Shakalu and a missing lion and Mr. Lee Ho and all sorts of stuff that Saul just didn't have. That's all. The truth, Ruth. <laughs> um, well, also, we, we need to introduce you because you're actually sitting next to our pet cat today. And <laughs> we didn't get to introduce you guys off the bat. I think it's on your other side. There you go. There he is. Uh, guess oh, what's oh. happening? Peter Dante, <laughs> yeah, it's your motherfucking birthday, birthday dude. Yeah. Oh, baby. Oh, guys, good this good is a very, yes. very oh, amazing yeah. moment. On about that time, oh, wow. Santa Claus is here, Fair. and Santa Claus knew it was Peter Dante's birthday. No way. He's got a December birthday. Sam. He deals with this all the yeah. time. Woo. What's up, yo? We gotta, everyone's got to say hi to everyone. Um, this is amazing. 
Let's we may it. have. Let's light this, this thing. thing. Oh yeah. Can we switch that, by the way? Yeah. Let, here. Let me hold the. Let wow. me hold the cake. We are about Santa. Accepted. We're gonna. Yo, guys. We have never. This is actually. I don't know. Peter Dante can bring us in the mix on this because you're a December birthday. You've had this kind of birthday slash holidays thing that you've had to master through the course of your life. I've never even had to experience that. What's that been like for you? Uh, being from a huge family, you kind of complain like a little, you know, little bitch about it. Oh, I'm nine days before Christmas. I don't get as many presents. Oh, yeah. But you know what? I Now, later on in life, I, I never think that a birthday matters. Every day matters so much. I feel that being near the holidays is, is a gift. Being in the middle of Hanukkah this year is a huge gift. Having friends like Dope as YOLO rolling through with Santa Claus! Santa as yeah. YOLO? Dope as LA. Santa? Only in Englewood, motherfucker! <laughs> We're Only in Englewood. in Englewood, in a garage. Dope as YOLO has brought a <laughs> Christmas cake slash birthday cake oh to Mr. Right Peter right Dante. Yeah, We're cool. making history here, guys. We've made history before, but this feels like it's a particularly momentous event that Peter Dante is having his birthday slash Christmas cake here. Oh. These we were candles just are about getting lit. Too, how he's, oh, I'm watching it live in the other room. He's coming in hot. I'm watching it. Yeah, what is he right? coming out with? He's uh, three strains and then helping people register. Helping people get their cannabis businesses straight. No shit. Yes. That's, That's true. That's smart. Yeah, yeah, people need that. There's demand. Therefore, let's create supply. All right, we got, I mean, we got, we got most lit. of them. Yeah, we I mean, lit. what do you guys think? It's like, do we have to go all the way? Should we get one of those? Here, let's. I was over here burning the shit out of my thumbs. You are amazing, <laughs> This is crazy. All right, there Look at that. There you are. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Yes. Happy birthday, dear Peter. <laughs> Happy birthday to Thank you. you. Smoke one. Here we go. We're going to smoke that middle one. And my wish, you all know what it is for. Nice. Oh, there look at that. And I'm going to take one of these. Mm -hmm. also. What are we smoking on here, Dope? This is THC Design. THC Design, shout out once again. Bringing the, bringing the sexy pre-rolls. Many people think those pre-rolls are just a one-dimensional product, They're but they can nice. also be used as birthday cake candles. Don't oh yeah, that's right, it. look. Remember this. Pre-rolls can be also used as birthday. People may appreciate that level of detail. Yeah, we gotta leave that, we need to Holidays that, that and gifts dope. are all about being thoughtful, and if the person whom you're giving a gift to but like pre-rolls, just make them the candles on the cake. That's right. And yo, if anyone in your family forgets to tell you what they want. Give them weed. Yeah. I do have time. Pre-rolls, yo. And if they don't smoke, let them try some edibles like Dante's <laughs> Inferno lollipops or brownies or anything. Give them some weed. I always give weed, edibles, and shatter a little gift pack. Me too, yeah. It's, it's fucking easy. It's, it's great. So Everybody's sweet. Yolo, what's the best Christmas present you ever got when you think back on it? Uh, a little uh, camera, a lot of light background. This right here. I know it's not kind of lame, but it's the best thing I can remember. Really? I can use all my shit. Oh yeah, shit. shoot, it's fuck yeah. Awesome. Well, there's no, there's nothing like a Christmas present that just helps you step your game up. You know what I mean? You're That's like, damn, I was, I was waiting for this for so long, and now fuck all the all that time I spent thinking, damn, this Besides could be better. That, PlayStation One. PlayStation One. I strong when I got second. That shit, I was so fucking hyped. <laughs> what was your best game on PlayStation One? Blitz. Respect. Second. Good Blitz times. Sick. I like that game. I love it. When we did Grandma's Boy, they let me and Swartzen and Goosen, and I think Joel David Moore, probably Alan Covert also, Grandma's Boy, they let us go to Activision. The game, the network? The network to, to, for the release of fucking, uh, for um, the release of, um, what's the army one? That has Call of Duty, the first one. Wasn't it the first one on 05? Oh, uh, I don't even remember. Black Ops, is that 05? Whatever one it was, dude, was gnarly. And my kids were so lucky, they gave us all like systems, Xboxes, and games for the kids for all Christmas. Right. I was like, yeah, here you go, fellas. That's the best gift ever, because you get to just gift it to the kids. You know what I'm saying? <coughs> there you go. Whoa! Damn, we got you coughing, yo. Yo, did you roll these? Did you roll these? <laughs> no, I didn't roll that one. Here, we can. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, hit it. Swap it around. Yeah, I'll let everyone that get a taste. That thing is a cannon. That's what Dope is Yolo's known for right there, ladies and gentlemen. Fat joints. Cannon. Fat joints. Fat joints, cannons, chilling out, being Santa. This isn't the first time you've been this Santa. This is the second time this week. Thomas, <laughs> tell us more about the being Santa. Time. I did a whole skit the other day about like, break, like what would you do if you caught Santa Claus breaking your fucking house? Because honestly, he's just a man that breaks into your house and he might leave you some shit. So in all reality, it's He'll take your energy. cookies. Take my shit. It's a true story. But yeah, I did a little skit yesterday. I want to see it. It's kind of funny. I want to see it. Did you like being Santa? Was that like a... Oh, you yeah, think it's, it's a, fucking awesome. I get to wear a beard and shit, but the only thing I keep forgetting, I keep smiling and shit, you can't see my face. I keep doing my facial expressions like while I'm talking, it's like I can't see shit, I forget. It's, it's, only it's the beard factor, you gotta learn how to like express yourself con beard, if you will. I don't grow beards, you see this? Oh, no, know. it looks like wouldn't, it wouldn't work so well. Yeah. It'd be a little, like, be a, it'd be, it'd be a little scrappy down there. <laughs> it's okay though, everyone gets a little scrappy now and again. <laughs> he could draw he, to grow a goatee. He just have the goat part. Goat That's tea. exactly. Yeah, I shaved my first time when I was twenty years old. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm lucky though. I don't gotta worry about it. Yeah, <coughs> keep it chill. <coughs> Does anyone remember we were talking about hot box earlier? I do. Either we're, either we're in a good version of hell or we're hot boxing the fuck out of this room right now. It's true. It's I think good. I think this would be called what's known as a, an official hot box. It's good. Right. I haven't been in a garage smoking in a very long time. Guys, if anyone doesn't know this, as I know it looks like we're shooting this show in a high production <laughs> facility with great. lots of expensive accessories. The truth of the matter is we're just chilling. It's fucking awesome. In what one might call a garage. We, like a by the way, being, yo, being from New England, if you didn't chill in the basement, you chilled in the garage. There were certain homes like my buddy John Kirkutis and Mike Kirkutis big Lithuanian brothers, if we weren't skipping school and hiding in their home, we were in the garage with the door open, music blasting, couches everywhere, ping pong table. I just did some Kicking it. Yeah, I just got drunk and smoked weed. <laughs> it's not good. I mean, I think that's what people do in a lot of places. It's not yeah. unique to where you grew up, but no. in New England, the, the garage and the, and the uh, basement were two key hangout areas. <laughs> it's 110 here. It's like outside in the backyard, I'm trying not to sweat, smoking. Yeah. Yeah, 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 no good. I do. I've only saw. I saw the snow. Like, I fucking love it, but it could be a hassle trying to go anywhere. Can you tell us about the first time you saw snow? How recently was that? Oh, the first time I saw snow was like fucking nine. Oh, okay. So yeah, you, it wasn't bad. You've been no, done shoveling with snow sucks. I've never shoveled any. I've touched snow. Like it's it's kind of crazy. But there's know. also an issue I've with you've shoveling. Never touched snow. Touched Sometimes snow you you hit. start like, shoveling shovel before it. the snow stops. What? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You yeah. have to do the freeze. I used to work the my free brother shovel. Shovel. <laughs> Yeah. And he would do the plowing, and I'd do the shoveling in parking lots. Like, you'd do the little walkways and shit. Yeah. And we, you'd start way too early, like three in the morning, and by five, there'd be another six inches. And he'd be like, So we're going back to that parking lot. You're like, Fuck that. Fuck that shit. I already shoveled it. Mr. Plow. Yeah, the pre shovel. It's the pre shovel. It's a super important guy. That's to avoid that little slippery. Layer underneath where you fucking eat shit. You, you know what I'll compare it to? It. It's like multiple layers of paint. Some people think painting a wall is just putting one layer of paint on. That's not the case. No. Multiple layers create the appearance of a painted wall. Same with shoveling. You have to shovel <laughs> multiple times to truly clear the shoveled area. Well, That's true. Your breakdown. That was awesome. I'm just saying, I'm trying to share these facts out there. People That's a great want analogy. knowledge. I'm trying painting to share Painting and it. shoveling <coughs> by Noah Rubin. <coughs> Jesus. It's like, yeah. Damn, this guy Noah Rubin, it, he reminds me of Ralph Waldo Emerson, Pete Dante, kind of like a Henry David Thoreau guy. We just didn't grow up on Walden Pond. No, but <laughs> but we could swim in it. It's, yeah. That's chill. It's chill out by there, out by Walden Pond. Yeah. It's very mellow. You could see why someone might want to just post up there. We smoked weed by it, and they smoked weed by it. They grew weed by it. There's weed that's grown by the house, formerly occupied by. The, it's by like a beautiful lake. It's pretty chill up there. Good place to grow some weed, maybe. Yeah, Where is sure. this at? Uh, it's in Massachusetts. It's in Massachusetts. New England, sir. Yes, New, England. New England. That's what. That's what this is. Home this of guy, all those uh, old school are guys like Noah Webster, Samuel Clemens, Mark Twain, Harry Beecher Stowe. A few people over there. This guy's. Uh, this guy. We have a comment from the audience saying that today is uh, his girlfriend's birthday today. Oh what? Uh, okay, let's shout what's out. What's her name? What's her Preston name? Eagle Staff. Oh. What's her name? Damn. What's their name? 
Louise. Guys, do we have another birthday? This is an important moment because <laughs> we had our first birthday on about that time earlier. Now we're finding out that a wonderful member of our audience is having their birthday as well. So guys, this is really just a giant birthday party. Another think Sagittarius. About it. Another Sag. Strong Sages out there. Fire sign. Very strong, Ooh. fiery Sages. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know why that's funny, but you know, like yeah. I don't know. I don't know why everyone is Strong, laughing. Strong, fiery vagus. <laughs> yeah! That's what it's, I'm talking about. It's happened, guys. It's happened. It's the holidays, of course. They're, <laughs> For sure. They're fiery. So, are we oh. finding out the name of whose birthday we are shouting out and celebrating? <coughs> Probably Melissa. Preston Eagle Staff's girlfriend is Preston Eagle Staff. Preston Eagle Staff, <laughs> your girlfriend, whoever in your family, <laughs> whose birthday it is, shout out to you. Happy birthday. It's worth celebrating. Being a Sagittarius is pretty fresh. Fresh and fiery, one might argue. Fiery, fiery, and hot. <laughs> you hot, Santa? Santa's always hot. Oof, Look at that red. He's, that, he's, not, he's wearing that red for a reason. Here, can I offer you some uh, yeah, chilled beverage? The La Croix. La Croix. Um, well. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Merry time. Not another time, this time. Today, right now, it's merry time. Agreed, agreed. Well, what we do. Santa, you thirsty? You want some coconut water? It's really delicious. Oh, wait, oh, wait. You Thank you. Can you give a personal message to his girlfriend? 100%. What's her name? Do we know? We don't know. We Just still can't. Eagle Staff's girlfriend. Hey, trust an Eagle Staff's girlfriend. Whatever your name is, you're a Sagittarius like myself. And hopefully you're about 25 years younger than me because I'm old as fucking dirt. But I love you. Happy birthday to you. Trust an Eagle Staff's girlfriend. Happy birthday to you. Trust an Eagle Staff's girlfriend. Happy birthday. Trust an Eagle Staff's girlfriend. Happy birthday. Trust an Eagle Staff's girlfriend to you. <laughs> Kaya. Oh, you're watching I was like, I'm just sitting here. Yeah, I'm, I'm just no, watching it. No. Guys, there's, there's a guys. Uh, meteor shower above us. Noah's it's checking true. out, by the way. No, I no, I'm watching your, your your rendition was really heartwarming. I had to watch it. I had to check in and see I what was happening. And I looked over and like, that's funny. Jason? You were doing the same shit. I mean, so it, was, it, was really, uh, it was really great. The camera work, you know, here we've got really, really advanced cameras that oh, can dude. capture things in ways that other places cannot. Cine red, not cameras, but yeah. The, just like the it. The jib work. I mean, people people just cry when they see the jib work. You oh, know? bro, it's not even about the dolly that we don't have. It's about the cameraman that we have. Bro. It's true, and women. Yes. The ladies and gentlemen. Our of whole this staff fine show. right here. The family of Mary time. Advanced cameras be shooting, guys. Not another time. Uh, Yola, did you meet our our pets? Our it's pet cat and time. our uh, pet pug. Bro, um, uh, what are their Jordan names? was at my house showing me unicorns. So yes, I've met all these guys. Oh, you've met you've met the you've met our pets then before. Yeah. At least you've met them digitally. But I'm saying here you are now. You're you're sitting adjacent to so Bowie. What are the, their names? Oh, no, that's Bowie There's the cat. The Bowie the Bowie the cat. <laughs> Bowie, what's up with the dog? Uh, the dog yet has, does not have a name, guys. No. Peter and Yola, you guys could together, oh. if you can come to a consensus, name the about that time pug. Oof. How do you feel about that? Nothing average, I know that. Wow. It's gotta be great. It's a special pug. The, I'll let you know that the, uh, this, the Pegasus that is flying across the stream, her name is C. Biscunt. <laughs> C. Biscunt! That is C. Biscunt. C. Biscunt, no. fly back, I wanna smell you. <laughs> that is C. Biscunt. Our cat is named Bowie. Bowie the cat. Bowie's C. dope. C. Huh? Biscunt. As YOLO. The we got this pug, pug, guys. The pug is in your sights, it could happen. What was the pug's name in that Will Smith movie? Oh, oh, fuck! I know exactly what you're talking about. You're talking about uh, did it have a name? The Men one in that, black, right? Yeah, the one that talked. What was that thing's name? It's oh, his he had cousin. A crazy accent, though. Yeah, I like him. It's his cousin. He's Pierre the pug. Pierre. Yeah, to go with the La Croix. Pierre, oh, the nice. French there you theme. Go, Pierre. Pierre, yeah, Pierre. there you go, Pierre. Yeah, Pierre. Guys, the oh, pug dog. has a name. His name is Pierre. Shout out to our pug. Pierre. Pierre the Pug. He's chilling with Bowie. That's Bowie the Cat. He's a good friend of Pierre the Pug. That's Seabiscunt. They are, yeah, they are all she, cousins of Pepe Le Pew, too. Pepe Le Pew, but you know. 
Yeah. Pepe, Pierre the Pug, Pepe the <laughs> Pew. They're chilling, for sure. Drinking a little espresso. They're hanging with Hercule Poirot. Mm -hmm. yeah. So anything can happen here on About That Time. About That Time. So something that happens during the course of About That Time, and Yola can tell you about this, is we go, we have astrology time. We go to the, uh, go to the astrology world. You ever had anybody do that to you? I flossed my shit. Really? He was so fucking pissed. That's good. I was shocked. That's good. I thought he talked to Rosie or something. Rosie, is it true that he thought that I talked to you? Yeah, he did. Rosie You're is confirming dead. from yeah. off camera right that he really thinks that I talked to her about yeah, his talk. At first, the at first, and she's like, no, that's astrology. I'm like, oh, fuck. This is a perfect time for that. All right, guys, perfect time. Let's go to Astrology Zone. What we do when we do that, and this is a great cake. We might want to even like light a candle again, but we break our, our salt, our salt rock. Yeah. Like, yeah. Woo! We turn it on. And that's the, we, it becomes astrology time. And it's good that we celebrated your birthday because it, it, plays, it plays a role here. Should I touch this cat? This is big. This is big, guys. This is astrology time. I've never had readings. I don't believe in things like that. But Noah Rubin, kid's legit. I'm just trying to have fun, chill well, out. That's what life's about. Share, share some hey, shit. You know. up, Two kids from New England and Cali with dope as YOLO getting... And blazed with Pierre the Pug and Bowie the Cat. Yes! And Seabiscunt! Right there, representing <laughs> Seabiscunt. Oh um, all right, Sun in Sagittarius. That's a good one. We know that. December birthday. This guy is celebrating it this weekend. Shout out. Your moon is also in Scorpio. Has anyone ever asked you that? What's your moon? What's your rising? No. Nope. Well, your moon is in Scorpio. You got a Sun in Sag, moon in Scorpio. Okay. Moon in Scorpio, What's courageous, brave. Oh, what does that mean? We're gonna talk a little bit about that. Sun in Sagittarius, a good, idealistic, enthusiastic, warm-hearted, independent, a taste for travel and freedom. Why not? Bingo. Those are those are nice things, right? Uh -huh. um, moon in Scorpio, brave, independent, and not fearful. Uh, type of man who's attracted to sensual, erotic women. That's just what it says. I like that. See Biscont. See Biscont. See Biscont's a killer, man. <laughs> yeah, I love She's her. a special, special lady. She can fly. It's true. I'm gonna chase her and get that ass. Okay, yeah. Okay, another aspect in your natal chart. So we're looking at your natal chart, we're seeing everything. Uh, Mercury and Sagittarius. A Democrat, philosopher, tolerant and respectful of laws, likes foreign travel, believes that everything teaches you something. Can you tell me a story about when you kind of felt yourself, you know what, as bad or as good, as this may be, I'm learning something here. <laughs> in foreign travel or local travel or which? And, uh, and whichever one strikes you best. Cruising up towards the San Onofre checkpoint, coming from Mission Beach back to LA. Careless, young, dumb as hell, don't do this. <laughs> Honda Accord, me and my buddy, Ounce and a half of weed under my seat, bong at my feet. Nice. Cruising past the checkpoint, wave at the homies. The sheriffs, they wave at me as the smoke pillows out, like, pull over, shithead. Uh, that was the time I got busted with over a pound and a half of weed. At the border, no less. It's not the border, it's that checkpoint oh, in Santa Fe that doesn't right. really operate anymore. Yeah. Don't do that. That's the last time I had something. How, how did you get yourself out of that situation, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, we got driven. Instead of driving to L.A., they drove us to Vista. Interesting place. Shout out to Vista. We play you guys in lacrosse. Love you. The, but the Vista courthouse and the Vista jail, not so nice. You know, just not a nice place. You're scared for your life. You get that one phone call and you tell your future wife, I can't pick you up at the airport tomorrow from your business trip because I'm in jail. That's bad. So, yeah. That gets tough. Yeah. That's, not a, that's not a fun phone call to yeah. make. Yeah. Anyway, everything teaches you something, however. That's a, le that's a life lesson. <clears throat> life lesson. it teaches lesson. you don't carry a pound and change of weed across any kind of border check. Yeah, while well, you're or smoking bong heads. Or hide it. Yeah, hide it. And don't be yeah. smoking the bong heads. Or just wait on the bong. Yeah, wait on the bong. Until after the checkpoint. Hide the bong. See, the thing, thing is, the checkpoint used to be hit or miss. It was kind of like playing Russian roulette. They were working sometimes, and sometimes they weren't working. So, yeah. But life lessons, that's the way it is. That's how I teach my kids when I coach lacrosse. I teach high school level kids who are you know, of age, of doing things, especially here. 
in California, this kind of thing. I just tell them, if you do do it, be careful. Don't bring it to school. Don't get expelled. You know, be smart. That's all. Don't be careless. Don't be careless, guys. That's a very good lesson to learn. Don't be careless. Most times, have to learn it the hard way. Mm -hmm. You know, lessons are hard learning. That's right. You'll continue to learn them, and oh. you will continue to be careless off and on, but as long as you regroup and change, then guess what? You'll be all set. Because you, you can go. change in an instant. Especially, don't get down during these holiday times, peeps. Santa right here wants to tell you, right yeah. through Dante. Dope is YOLO, Dante and Noah Rubin want to tell you. First of all, happy Hanukkah. Second of all, Merry Christmas. And the new year is going to be a better year for all of us. There's going to be a lot less death, a lot less negative change. There's going to be so much more positive change and so much more love. But I want to say, while you go through the holidays together, whoever you're with, love them. Cherish them. Don't fight with them. Choose the high road, not the low road. Choose love over hate. Choose light over dark. And treat yourself well. Treat yourself with love and light so that you can treat the others with the same. Wow. Damn. Thank you, sir, for sharing that. Everybody yes. out there, I hope y'all was listening. Damn. That's a really great way to look at the new year, guys. It's been a, it's been a rough couple of years, I think. I, yeah, I think we all did. agree that. This year was next year. terrible. This yeah. year was trash. <laughs> Too many motherfuckers went down. It was really Oof. a dark time. A really dark time. But guys, keep positive. 2018, things can get brighter. I like that. That was Mercury and Sagittarius we just discussed. The next element we can <laughs> chat about, Jupiter and Libra. Um, is it, can you ever trust too much? So this, this element implies that there may have been a moment where you got yourself into a questionable situation by giving someone a benefit of the doubt that you shouldn't have given the benefit of the doubt to. I think in a Sagittarius way, because I'm, I'm almost a half a century soon, in a few a couple years here, so I feel you can be overly loyal to a fault. You, you can be overly loyal to a fault where it turns out that you trust too much because you love and you expect, you may have unrealistic expectations of the other human or of the situation where you are loyal to it to a fault. You're overly loyal, you stick with it, you do it no matter what because you feel that that's what you're supposed to do. And then, yeah, it doesn't work out the way, you know what I mean? It right? happens. Yeah, it's part and of that's life. life. Yeah. And I also want to say about that, do it again. Be overly loyal again. Be overly loving, trust because you will find that right person, you know? Because we all get screwed over. You know, there's people who have ill will and there's those of us that have goodwill. And those of us that have goodwill will win over those who have ill will just by trusting them and loving them again until they have to give in to that trust and love. That's very real talk. Important words to be said. Said, not said often enough. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Good shit. Mm -hmm. um, the next aspect we can discuss is the trine between Venus and Uranus. Um, My anus or, yeah. No, no specifically <laughs> yours. Specifically like yours. It was good, right? Trying to skip the it was very classroom laughter. Pronunciation was yes. key there. <laughs> <laughs> very, very key. You know, we the big U, maybe we'll just call it the big U from now on. Might as well. I think the big U is a, a better way to do it. You can fit your it. foot in it. It's good. We're all right. If Pierre, and, if Pierre and Bowie are down with it, then it could work. Um, <laughs> they seem cool. That the cat's looking away, sheepishly looking up, embarrassed. Like, is he talking I mean, about his asshole? Totally. No, it's the, totally. it's the U now. No, it's the U. The, the big U. <laughs> the big U. Um... Look, uh, we actually have our C Ray visiting you. Uh, it's on your head there, Peter. Uh, you see him? Careful, don't step on him. Those things can sting you. Wow, I like smoked that. his ass out. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Thanks for sharing. I'm sure <coughs> undersea creatures, I'm sure, are appreciative when you share with them. Look at that. Uh, with Santa, underwater Santa. I know. Kind of, that's a, that's a new life. vibe. Fucking I don't know if it's about underwater Santa. <laughs> that's amazing. The villain. Um, <coughs> so, trying to Venus and the big U. <laughs> I'm trying to get it right. You are, <laughs> uh, Back to the big U. 
Noah? Why do we keep it's, it's why do we keep going back to the big U? We can't get enough of the big U. All right. Bottom line. So what are we talking about? The We're ju- talking about losing liberty. Oh, when you grow up, is there is there a battle between acceptance and the loss of liberty? Growing like, up? I think until you have a child and you actually cut that umbilical cord or you have some certain responsibility to a point where you need to do something to survive, you don't grow up. Some people don't, if they don't feel the pressures of certain things, they don't have to grow up. Certain people have certain situations in life where they may have a trust fund or whatever, or they may just be comfortable with exactly what they do, that they keep the same, you know, same age, same mentality their whole lives. It seems impossible, but in our country, it's very doable. Oh, it's, it Don't you think? Realistic. Right? I was just saying, like, when the fuck am I gonna feel like a grown up already? Right. I was saying this to Rose. I'm like, damn, I don't think I'm ever gonna feel different. No. Ever. Dude, I'm 49 on Saturday. Um, I'm 14 on this couch. <laughs> True that. How's that? <laughs> Trying to keep it high level. Catch you that. Know? Yeah, right. Trying to keep it. And I'm not saying an uneducated 14. I'm well read, and I love things and history and where we're from, but I love keeping my heart young and keeping an open young spirit so that any age can attract to it. Respect. Yeah, love. Hmm. It's a good one, one might argue. Um, One more aspect from astrology time. Uh, (laughs) Doesn't like staying in the same place and is willing to even take a step back in the name of making change. Me? That's you, buddy. <coughs> yeah. Uh, that comes, that, that's patience. Yeah. That's the word patience that so many of us, including myself, lack <coughs> a lot. <coughs> but being patient enough to step back and not be egregious to have to try to go for it all the time, where I see people pressing, in their lives daily for everything, every day. Same thing, same routine. I feel taking a step back and being patient and doing things a different way can reward you in a different way. And you can have a better life, a better quality of life, a more comfortable life, and a different outlook on life with more patience. And patience in life, which gives you compassion, which Ends up basically with love, because that's all that matters. I think that that's really well put. I couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, Well, we can step back out of astrology time now. (laughs) Um, Change the lighting a little bit. Yeah. Because that was a great conclusion. That rock was crazy. I like that thing. Uh, It actually, if you lick it, it tastes like like salt. Got some frosting. I like the frosting. Green frosting. Green frosting, guys. You know, about that time, we're always not afraid of being green. Best birthday cake I've ever gotten in my whole life. I mean... It was a team effort. It was a team effort. Yeah. Um, oh, I, know the, I know the fam, Dan. Oh, yeah. They got me. <laughs> oh, I've been hiding for a minute. I saw you yeah, walk in. I was just no standing way. suit. Yeah, like, oh, oh, yeah. Surprise them. Oh, nice. Strategies. Smart. Strategies. Smart. Anyway, guys, about that time, Mary Jane, we've been having a great time chilling out here with Peter Dante and Dope Yola, celebrating birthdays, sharing knowledge, chilling out, naming important animals that are integral to your life and your life well-being. Yeah. Pierre in a garage in Englewood. In a garage in Englewood. With Seabis Cunt. Seabis Cunt. High level <laughs> shit. What is our Ray named? For real. No. Uh, don't call him Steve. No. Out of just like. Yeah. Some, our Ray's name is don't call him Steve. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, the Ray's don't name call is don't call him Steve. Kerwin. <laughs> Sorry. Don't call him <laughs> Respect. Steve. <laughs> That's I a was good thinking one. We came the like, Ray. Oh. Guys, thank you so much for joining us today on About That Time. <laughs> it's been beautiful. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Happy holidays. Happy Hanukkah. Before, before you go, we're going to actually give you another gift, which Ooh. is the Weekend Box, who are the sponsors of Roll the News, yes. uh, in addition to our main sponsors, THG Design. That's full yeah. of goodies for you, sir. You're welcome to open it and oh, play around with them if you like. Yeah. There you go. <sighs> Love you guys. Are we still rolling? Yo, so all you guys that saw this episode today, 
Tell your friends. I'm not going to be able to open that. I know it. Okay. Tell your yeah. friends. Now Go rewatch this episode and watch them again and again, and then watch every new episode that my boy Noah has because they're <laughs> all going to be great. And. <laughs> yeah, totally. Sure. Tell them about what you got out there. Hit me up on Instagram at El L underscore Presidente. El Presidente. And maybe we'll get some of these in your legal state. Dante's Inferno. Legal. Yeah. No joke. Step your pop, step your lollipop game up, folks. Let it be known. There we Santa. go. What do we got? Weekend box. Weekend box. About that time. Oh, no, what what is it? Signing oh. off. Oh, nice. Good job. Nice. Is this what the, the company's called? The weekend box. Sick. Smart. When it comes to packaging, marketing. That's the best one too. Unreal. That's the best hash jar they that have. That keeps the that best one. butter. Yeah, right. I love that one. Keeps the cleanest butter, right there. The best crumble. Oh shit. Yep. Wow. Oh my God. Taser. Noah, thank Perfect you. Perfect name because it would last. The weekend box. Thank weekend. you guys. There you go. The weekend Perfect. rise. Smell that. Hey, that's J one. We're smoking in the bowl. Huh? Is it J one? Tastes like that. it. Yeah, Is that's it? good. The weekend rest. I bet the rise is a sativa, and the rest is the indigo. How do you feel about that? I bet this is an OG. Mm. No, how's that? Is that fruity? Is that fruity like me? Oh, it is mm. <laughs> delicious. <laughs> this I love that. Smells delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Let me smell. That is, that's a good OG, right? Us. Okay, here we go. Ooh. Look at this. Ooh. It's not even hot. Oh, there it goes. Straight to It's all overheated. Is it working? Ooh. It happens. Oh, that was hot. Nice. Rip City, Santa Monica. Rip City. Get your skates there. Hey, I will say, Flavor RX does good shit. Flavor RX. Their little pens are pretty My boys. Cool. Alejandro, all you fools that work there, you guys are my homies. I love you. Post that pic today. I'll repost it of the key. The key hitter that they got, the ones that looks like our car keys, pretty dope, with the charger inside of it, really good. I just check that one out. The Flavor RX, that key hitter. Oh, what the fuck? It looks just like it flips open like a key. I like it. I can't remember. It's pretty sick, dude. Does the job. It's cool. Wow. Thank you so much. Weekend box. Weekend box. Good to people coming through, sharing the wealth, sharing the love. Dope as Yola. You're a great, fucking great Santa Claus. He's the best like, Santa Claus. You're like the best Santa Claus of all time. That is fucking awesome. You should awesome. be, guys. I was watching the face Dude, of he is Santa, Santa Claus. The new face of Santa Claus. I mean, no offense. I'm new talking about. New face of Santa Claus. You know, I'm not new talking about Santa Claus, the other Santas it. being bad, but this is the modern day Santa Claus right, right here. here. Every dude. year. I was thinking about well, throwing out joints on Hollywood Boulevard as dressed as Santa. Fuck yeah, dude. But I want to get arrested. That's part of the reason you're the modern Sharing day Santa Claus. Sharing is caring, Claus. though. So, like, there's two sides to that story. True. I want to go home. <laughs> I don't want to get arrested. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Go to a bars. Go to bars. Everyone's 21 and over. Hey, Thomas, give us a Christmas. You can do a shout-out. Huh? Do a little Christmas shout-out. Um, Wish everybody can get a positive beer. Okay. I was like, what do you mean? But now I understand. Well, I'll put this bitch back on. <laughs> the beard. The beard's Eesh. great. You got like the blue frosting in I the beard, too. too. It's too good. It's so extra good. good. Because you eat cookies. Like, that's the thing. Santa eats cookies. Smokes cookies. Yeah, of course. Yeah, Santa smokes cookies. There you go. That's a good ad. <laughs> you should charge them for that. Though, for, for burner, sure. yeah. Burner can afford you. <laughs> uh, Santa. <laughs> what am I looking? Looking great. You're looking. You can monitor up. Right. Buddy. Above the camera. Right, and then what do you want me to say? Just say Merry yeah. Christmas, Mary Jane, or yeah, about that time? What's up? From, from anybody. All right. Hey, everybody. This is Dope Azola, Santa, a.k.a. Santa Claus. Starting all the way over. Because I, I fucked that up. Right no, that's good. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> You remember. I fuck up a lot. <laughs> All right. Hey, what's everybody? Dope is Yola here. Mary Jane, Noah Rubin, Don Peter Dante, about that time. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Smoke weed, have fun, and get high. Again. Greatest Santa ever. Best ever. Dope is Yolo. Oh, fuck. Dope is Yolo. <laughs> Highest Santa. Highest, Highest Santa, Santa ever. ever. Dude, I'll either get the coolest service or the worst service when I go to restaurants, and that's, <laughs> that's why, right there. Uh, Jesus Christ, I didn't know that's what my eyes look like. <laughs> <laughs> Step your visine game up, sir. <laughs> Shit.
<laughs> anyway, guys, thank you so much for coming through. THC Design, The Weekend Box, Dope is Yola, thank you, thank you. Peter Dante. We're having fun. We're chilling out, That's celebrating great, the life of a great Sagittarius. I love my Santa. See you soon, guys. Oh.